Hello there fellow humans, today I'm gonna have a look at the Object 752 and whether it is worth buying, but first let's look at the regular shop, what else is in here, obviously crates are as always a bad purchase, and in the resource section, well we don't have anything here that is any good because these do include crates, so I wouldn't recommend these personally. So, now I'm gonna go straight into the tank section now. The Concept 1B, I've already made a review of this video like last week, so check that out if you wanna know more about the Concept 1B. But, because it's only here for another 20 hours, I would move quite quickly because I think this vehicle is worth purchasing right here. Then we have the T-34, I already made a separate video about that yesterday as well, so check that out. And then we have these Soviet Scouts right here, which I do not recommend whatsoever. 10k for two tier eights in this configuration would be very nice, but for uh, tier eight and a tier seven, I don't think this is a good idea. The 748, it's okay, but not worth it for the price uh, that is being uh, charged here. So we have an okay tank for a not so okay price. And then we have the Fearless Platoon here. Again, solid tanks, too much of a price here, but obviously Wargaming is jacking up the prices massively quite a lot. So this is probably the way it's going to be in the future now that we're going to have a massive increase in the pricing of vehicles which is not good obviously because here's the thing the object 752 is right here for 30 euros locked times fives not really great but you do get credit boosters and all other sorts of boosters in here as well no credits no premium days so you're really reducing it down just to the vehicle and the boosters but 30 euros for the sink i think is quite justifiable given how good this tank is also, another PSA, if you have the ability to read, the Hololive event is going to start as well, so you're very free to read that event. I'm obviously personally not going to cover it, because uh, I'm not into this kind of thing, so I won't care. But, object. Basically, how you equip it, how you provision it, this is how I would do it. Again, ammunition, always a diagonal line, that is the most simple way to equip a standard vehicle that has standard rounds, premium rounds, HE rounds. It's the most standard way, the easiest way to equip them. And then this is how I would load out the tank. Otherwise, it does have heat as premium shells, so the calibrated makes most sense. Obviously, optics, engine accelerator, and consumable delivery system is always locked in for this type of vehicle. Um, then we have the improved assembly, 82 hit points. You could theoretically go for the enhanced armor, but it's not really going to do you much because of the angles of the tank, which we're going to talk later. Obviously, toolbox always, and then refined gun, because you do get quite a decent boost, and it is not fast enough to profit properly of the vertical stabilizer. So this is how I would personally load out the vehicle. And then let's have a look at the statistics of it as well. 2,400 DPM, 4 seconds intro clip. It's pretty terrible for a auto reload, auto loader, but it's like 4 seconds is the maximum that you can basically tolerate. The penetration on this vehicle, especially running calibrated, is excellent. 268 standard, 384 on the premium, and even 73 on the HE with 430 alpha damage. So that is a very good gun right here. The dispersion, 0.31, is also quite solid. Um, obviously, it's not as good as other tanks with 0.27. The aim time over is the biggest problem here at 4.8 seconds, which is absolutely awful. And then we have 8 degrees of gun depression, which is quite a lot for a Soviet tank, so that is quite appreciated there. However, there is a very big problem with the turret that I'm going to have to talk about in a minute. But first, the mobility powder weight ratio of 14 and average speed of 30. It is going to get you to where you need to be, and it is also going to get you out of where you don't want to be. Obviously, though, one downside is the turn rate of this vehicle is quite slow. So let's have a look at the armor right here. It is quite simple. The lower plate is a weak spot. Don't ever shoot at the upper plate unless you're like hovering above it, which you won't, so don't do that. And then the sides are quite well angled. So if you are at the side of the vehicle, I think the best way to shoot it is going to be in the flat places. Problem is the uh, hull doesn't really go down very far. So if you shoot, you see it right here, if you shoot at the track wheels here, you're not going to pin anything because the hull doesn't extend far down so you pretty much have to shoot it up here in the sides and if you are shooting at it flat from the sides you're going to pin it quite easily if the tank tries to side scrape you have this plate right here that you can fire into with sufficient penetration so just try it and see what happens because i'm not a guru i can't tell you exactly what to do i can only give you an indication of what can be done and then you try it out for yourself because you're never going to get better at world of tanks blitz by watching videos you're going to get better at World Tank Splits by doing things in-game and experimenting what works, what doesn't work. And the video can only give you an indication of what you can try and can't try. But simply watching more videos isn't going to make you any better. Just like this vehicle and the turret 
is a oscillating turret, it's mounted right here, which means that if you depress the gun to the full 8 degrees, these cupolas will rise up at the back of the turret, and therefore you will have a quite big problem when playing this vehicle hull down, because the cupolas are going to come with you, which means if you go hull down, you will always have these two cupolas exposed straight in front of the enemy, and you don't want to expose yourself like that. So always wiggle the tank back and forth and be aware that the cupolas will not provide you with any cover when you use the gun depression. They will in fact move with you and then be a massive problem. All right, let's get into a battle with the 752. And what do we do at the start of the battle? We find the advantage. Where is our team better than the enemy team? That's where we want to go, right? You don't want to fight from the disadvantage. You want to fight into the advantage, basically. So let's see what we can do here. They got four, we got four. So uh, let's go over there on the medium side, trying to dominate that, trying to take them out. And uh, let's see what we can do over here. All right. What are we doing? What are we doing? Hello. So Mac, obviously he's now going to have to disappear. What's important here is that we like get rid of these mediums, push them away, hope that the enemy heavies, hello there tiger, he has decided to do the good thing. Now remember the cupolas are depressing, so when I depress the gun like this, the cupolas are going up, so I have to be very careful with that every time I play this tank. So now I'm just going to go for the reload, obviously if I do decide to push the tiger here, I can, I can be crossfired from the bottom. But I'm going to take that risk right now. Let's put these two shells into the tiger right here. Uh, finish him off to get even on kills right here. Okay. So the control here isn't really that great. The Chimera, I think, is AFK. So this is quite a big disadvantage here. And there is a car recamping in the back. Now, I think... Um, what is the... See, the STRV has no game awareness. Because this is what's going to happen to him right here. He goes for the ammo, And then this is what happens to him. So, have some game awareness here. And uh, there's a K2 up there as well, which means I can't go there, which means I'm going to have to get out of this entire situation completely. You see me not committing too completely to that situation, because obviously if I go all the way over there to the ammo and the ammo dies, then I'm screwed. So, K2, going to aim. Look at the aim time. It's awful on this vehicle. Going to trade one. My trade is favorable, because I have higher alpha damage. And I also have this second shell available. Camera has now woken up. I do not want to fight with these guys, so I'm just going to send a snapshot and disappear. Remember, you don't fight the fight that you can't win. You X. You remove yourself from the fight that you don't win. Or uh, you just start a fight that you can't win and then drag it out forever and pretend that you're a good guy. But that is... Oh, hello. Not it. Let's see. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Let's go. Gonna try to get the car re first. Penetration is a problem. DPM is a problem. STRV is low. He's not gonna be a problem. So take out the the tank that's the most likely to shoot and pen you. And now we're gonna have the K2 right here. Should be pretty easy. Probably not even gonna get much damage, but that is a very solid game right there. And remember, if the game was fun, why care about the damage? Even though it was 3.5k damage anyway. All right, game number two in the 752 here, and it is a tier 9 battle once again, which is very lovely. Now, this is one of the very unique maps where going to the heavy side is actually a good thing. So we're going to do that, but we're going to do it properly. I'm going to take map control right off the beginning here. I have 8 degrees of gun depression, which means I have enough to fight this hill right here. If I, for example, had 6, then I wouldn't be doing this, but I have 8 degrees of gun depression. I can fight this hill right here, peek up. Um, and now take out these guys, push them into the corner, and I gotta go for the control of this guy. There we go, quite solid. And uh, I'm gonna pull back now for the reload, and that's kind of one of the advantages that you have with an auto loader. Oh, here he comes! Here they come! Here they come! Okay, here's here's what's important. Now my team has to react, and I, for example, has to go over for this guy. Like take out the guns first. Is my team going to react to this? Are they gonna come down? Yes, the charioteer is coming down. That is lovely. And now the T. NH has a quite big problem because I'm just gonna press W here, push him forward, uh, the Titans behind him. I have a big problem here because I have to uh, let him go forward. I have to let him go forward here, right? Don't go to the middle. Don't die in the middle of the point. Nope. Because, the, the, very important here, like, think, think ahead. Because if I left, if I stayed exactly where I was before, I could have not gotten out of here and the Titan probably 
could have not evacuated either. I'm gonna have to turn myself up here and then wiggle myself out perfectly because if I would have stayed here, then the BZ and the TNH would have blocked me in. So I can't do that move. I have to reverse and then give him space to die so then I can evacuate after his death. Always think ahead of what's going to happen next because if you don't do that, you are gonna get most of the time overwhelmed. So fire that shot off. Probably have a problem here. 535 hit points, that is not enough to survive a shot from a T30, so I'm gonna have to be careful with him. The MX Defender is somewhere behind us. Um, it's a bit of a problem here because I can't go around the Progetto 100% without being sure the T30 won't shoot at me from there, but I now can do that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make something that might sound dumb and might look dumb, but I'm going to evacuate from this position here and I'll go around the outside. I try to um, also watch out for the MX here, mainly. I just don't want to get shot in the back by that. So I'm going to stay up here now, and the MX is going to push from the rear. So I'm going to hold for that right now. One, and he's going to push forward again. He has another shot, so he's going to stay there. Nope, oh, no, that's the four. Se that's the four-second interclip problem right here. Um, so I'm again, I'm going to go and uh, try and cut this guy off here from getting out. Um, obviously I still have 10 second reload. He can reload f faster than me. Um, he's also not very good at this game, so it's gonna be perfectly fine and he can't kill me anyway. So, I'm gonna get rid of that. And now that we've done that, I'm gonna turn around. The T-30 could approach me, uh, from this side of the map. So I'm gonna try to go, uh, have the KPZ go ahead. He's full HP. Um, so the, the T-30 is gonna fire at the KPZ. And then I'm gonna have a full two-shell unloading process on the T-30, so I'm gonna stay behind him a little bit here and uh, use hit points to my advantage. Um, always think ahead. Always look at the surroundings of the battlefield, what's gonna go on. Uh, where is that T-30 moving? What can he do? So now, um, obviously, I, d I don't wanna go this way uh, because if the T-30 keeps going this way, then he's gonna run into me. I don't want that. I want him to run into the KPZ. Now he's turning. Um, he's just fired at the KPZ, so he's engaging with the KPZ. Now I can make this move over here on this side um, to put two shots into him from the side because you can see him clearly focusing on the KPZ here. Obviously, this could be a mistake if the T-30 decides to completely turn around and face me entirely. Then I'm not going to get any further damage. He's going to come and kill me, but that is not what I expect him to do. I don't expect him to be that intelligent, and that is a correct assumption right here. He continues to fight the KPZ. KPZ losing all his hit points. He just went way too far there. He should have not positioned himself between the 50 TP and the T30. Um, so now I'm going to try to go for it. Nope, never mind. I was I tried to help the KPZ one time there, but it was wasted. And now I'm going to pull back and hope for the T30 to get shot. And there we go. That's the 752. I highly recommend it. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And see you in the next one. Goodbye.